I recently had someone leave a comment asking about how to work with MIDI notes, specifically uh, adding them in by drawing them in. They specifically asked, how can I move the notes easily like in FL Studio? In a sense, how can I put my notes in the right place? I'm having a tough time because every time I draw a melody, the notes slide by micro values. Now, I'm not sure exactly what this person means by drawing them in and they move by micro, micro values. So I figured I'd go ahead and put together a quick tutorial on how we can go about manip manipulating the MIDI notes within Studio One. And I'm going to try to cover all of the details on that in this video. So here I've got a track with a synth loaded up. So I'm going to double click here and add a MIDI part. And I'm going to come to the edge and just draw that out to extend that for... Uh, two bars and I'm going to press P to set our loop locators around these two bars So at this point, I'm going to double click to open up our editor and in the name of just having more real estate So we can see everything that's going on. I'm going to click this arrow here in the upper right hand corner Here and detach that and then let's maximize Okay, so here we have our editor for working with this MIDI part. And this is where we can add and manip manipulate our MIDI notes. So um, for this individual, I think one, and for any of you who are new to Studio One or maybe having issues with the, the notes and where they're placed at and getting them as you want, an important thing to keep in mind is that the snap function, which is here, we can toggle that on and off by clicking or pressing in on the QWERTY keyboard as well as the quantize value that you have set here is going to play an important role in your placement and length of the notes. So um, the snap is active right now. So the first way we can add our notes is just by double clicking with the arrow tool. And if you notice here, this is added as a 16th note because our quantize value is set to 16th. If I were to change this to say quarter note and then double click, we can see that that's added as a quarter note. Now we also have the paint tool here, which we can select by clicking there or pressing three on the QWERTY keyboard. And then with this, we can just click once to add a note. And again, that's gonna be added based on our quantize value. If I change that to eighth notes, then we get an eighth note that's added. Now with this, we would just hover and we get the erase tool automatically. And then we can remove these out. I'm going to press one to come back to the arrow tool. And with the arrow tool, when we click once, we select. If I double click, we remove it out. Okay, now we've seen that the quantize value is going to affect the length. So while this is set to eighth note, if I double click, then we get an eighth note. Um, but it's also going to snap to the eighth note grid. So if I were to click, say, here in the center of this area, it's going to default or snap to this this eighth note subdivision now if i press in to deactivate the snap the note's going to be added wherever i click it's we're still going to get the eighth note length that we have set here in quantize if i change that to quarter note and then click in the center of this subdivision here then we have a quarter note but we have the freedom to place the notes wherever we'd like and i'm wondering if this is what this individual is experiencing maybe if if i come back to the paint tool and they're trying to add this with the snap not on and it's not going precisely on the grid like as they would like then just activate this and then now it's going to snap to the grid now i'm going to press one to bring up the arrow tool and let's select a group of these notes and I'm going to press delete to remove those. Now, what if we have notes that we would like to duplicate? So if I come to the edge, we can adjust the length of the notes, whether we're working at the front of the note or the rear. But while that's highlighted, I can press D to duplicate. And if I hold alt and then click hold and drag, we can also duplicate that note as well. And actually I'm gonna turn the audition off so when I'm selecting these, we'll, we won't hear any sound. And I'm gonna press delete to delete those last two notes out, as well as that one. And I'm gonna select this group of notes. We can also duplicate by using control C to copy. And then wherever we place our song position cursor, if I place that at the beginning of 
bar three, I can control V to duplicate those there. And if I control Z to undo that, if I right click here on the MIDI note, we can also do that within the contextual menu as well. So if I copy and then paste, we achieve the same thing. The song position cursor is still here at the beginning of bar three, so they're placed there as we just saw a moment ago. Now we've seen that with the arrow tool active, we can just click, hold, and drag to select a group of notes. We can also use Control A to select all of the notes within the particular MIDI part that is active and that we're working in. We can also use the left and right arrow keys on the QWERTY keyboard to select notes. So if I press the right arrow, then that first note is selected. If I press it again, then we move to the next, the next, and so on. Just pressing the right arrow repeatedly. And of course, if I press the left arrow, then we move back. Now, if I were to hold down shift while using the right arrow, then we select all of the notes like so. If I press the right arrow, arrow again without holding shift, then we end up with the last note highlighted. If I hold shift and press the left arrow, then we select the contiguous notes in this way. And holding shift using the right arrow, we select them one, deselect them one by one. And just know that we do have a variety of selection options within the action menu up above here. So if I click on this down arrow, then we can come to the select notes here at the top. And then we have a menu with a variety of options that we can use to select notes within the MIDI part. I won't go into the detail on this because I've already covered that within the uh, using the actions menu tutorial that I put up a few weeks ago. So I'll leave a link up above here in the upper right corner if you're interested in checking that out. Okay, so what about moving notes? Now I can, we've seen the left and right arrow to select. If I hold shift and select, say, several of these notes, I can use the up and down arrows on the QWERTY keyboard to move these up one semitone at a time. Now, if I were to hold down shift while using the up and down arrow, then I can move these up one octave at a time. And again, we can also achieve this within the actions menu coming up top here. And then coming to the pitch section, we have transpose. If I click on that, then we can see we have a variety of options. Again, that is in that tutorial that I mentioned, working with the action menu, if you want to find out more about that. Now we can also nudge our notes um, left and right or move them horizontally. So if I were to hold down Alt and use the right arrow key, then we're going to move those based on the current quantized value, which is set to quarter notes. So if I were to change this to eighth notes, and hold Alt, use the right arrow, then we move by the eighth notes. If I were to, let me select the very first note here. If I were to hold Alt, then Control at the same time, use the right arrow, we're gonna move that by bar. And of course, this applies to multiple notes, so if I select these three notes here, Alt and Control, hold those down, use the right arrow, then we move that by a full bar. Now we can move these in a very precise manner by deactivating the snap up above here. I'll press in to deactivate that. And now when I select a MIDI note and hold alt, I'll use the right arrow. Then we move this in ticks. You can see that's it's very subtle, but that is moving. If I just hold the right arrow, then you can see if you need to get really precise settings, then you can use that by holding alt and using the left and right arrow keys while the snap is disengaged. I'll go ahead and turn that back on. And actually, let me turn that back off and select a group of these, move them out of place just a little bit, just to show you that if you have recorded MIDI notes live and you'd like to quantize these, I'm sure most of you already know this, but um, we can select those group of notes, press Q on the QWERTY keyboard, and it's gonna quantize based on the current quantize value that you have set up above. And we also have an auto quantize feature here. So if you activate this while you're recording a passage or a drum part live on your MIDI controller, then Studio One's going to automatically quantize those notes based on the quantize value that you have set here. Now over to the left, we have an inspector for the editor here. 
And we've already seen that audition notes, while that is unchecked, when we select notes, we're not gonna hear any sound. It won't be auditioned. If I go ahead and select that, turn that back on, then we can hear the notes. Below that, we have default velocity. So let me select everything and double click to add a note. I'm gonna activate that snap. So when we add a note, the velocity is automatically gonna be set to 80 because that's what we have set here. And if I hover down below, we can see that that's set to, the velocity is 80%. So if I were to change that to 50, I'll press enter, double click to add a note. Now we can see that the velocity is set to 50%. And of course we can adjust these at any time by hovering on the column below and adjusting, moving that up and down. Now below um, the default velocity, we have, actually let me change that back to 80, I'll press enter. We next have scale. And if we activate scale, then we can choose a particular scale that we'd like to, to work with. Notice that all of the keys now have this blue highlight at the edge of the keys. We are on C, chromatic, so they're all highlighted. But if I were to change this to, say, a minor pentatonic, Let's change that to E. Then we can see that the uh, highlighted keys does change. So now when we add notes, they will be restricted to the particular scale that we've chosen here. So we can see on this key here, F5, it's not in the scale. It's not highlighted in blue. And if I try to double click here to add a note, it's, it's not going to allow me to do that. It's going to place it on the... Uh, E5 just below. Again, if I come here and try to add, we can see that this is G4. When I try to add it there, it, it defaults down just below that to the F sharp 4. Now there may be notes that you'd like to add a couple that are not within the scale. So what you can do is just temporarily deactivate it but you could also add the note. And then once it's added, you can move it freely to any pitch that you'd like by using the up and down arrow keys. So you do have some flexibility there. And I'm gonna go ahead and deactivate that function. But before we move on, I do wanna show that also in the action menu, we do have an apply scale function. So if you have a passage that you've put together, say for a synth or a piano, and you'd like to hear how it sounds to a particular scale, you can go ahead and choose a different scale um, and just be sure that it's active and then come up to the actions menu and choose apply scale. And it's gonna move all of the notes to the nearest uh, area that falls within that scale. You can notice that those moved. If I control Z, then you can see they move back to their original position. All right, I'll deactivate that. And then next we have length, which is going to be active by default, and it's going to follow the quantize. And we've seen that, that when I double click to add a note, it's added by the current quantize value. If I change to quarter note, it's added to quarter note. If we'd like to disable that behavior, we could just click on this cue here. And then now, let me see that added quarter. Let's change to half. And so I've changed the quantize to half, but it's still on quarter. 30 seconds, it's still on quarter. So you can always disable that feature by clicking on the cue there. And just below that, the reason why we were getting these eighth notes is because this is going to be the setting that will be used if we disable here. If we choose not to follow the quantized value that we're choosing up above, then it's gonna use that what we have set here. So let me go ahead and disable that again and choose quarter notes. So now when I double click, we get a quarter note. Come to half. And then we get a half note. We even have a setting for dotted. Let me put this on quarter, double click here. And now we have a dotted quarter note. And we can also choose between straight, triplet. Let me take the dotted off. Now we have a triplet quarter note. 
quintuplet and septuplet. We'll put that back to straight and turn the follow quantize back on. Let's go ahead and select some of these notes and get things cleaned up a bit in here. Now finishing up at the bottom, this is going to be blank if we don't have a note selected, but as soon as we select a note, then we can see various information on that selected note. So we can see the start of the note, the end, its length, its pitch, and its velocity. And so we can click in these fields or use our mouse wheel to adjust. So if I were to come to the start, it's saying that it's starting on bar two and beat two. If I hover over the beat and use my mouse wheel, then I can scroll up to move that up one beat at a time. If I come to the next field and use the mouse wheel, then I can adjust that as well in a finer value. The end, if I come here, I can extend that out by beat. A more precise value you can come to this third field. And of course we could click and manually enter a value or maybe not. Okay, yeah, you just have to select, click once, select it, and then um, you can input a value. And I'll select this top one. We have the length. This is gonna be similar to working with the end parameters. And then we have the pitch here, so we can select once. And um, if I put in G5, press enter, then that's gonna to move to G5 here. And actually, one other thing I wanna mention while we're talking about the pitch is if we come to the data zoom down below, if you're having problems kind of identifying where things are at, we do have these guides, C6, C5, C4 here, but we could also use the data zoom, click hold, and then pull that up. And at a certain point, take notice of the front of that one note that we have in there, you can see G5 pops in right here. So if you wanna expand that out, then you can have a label for each note that you add in. Okay, now we can also use this drop down arrow to select a particular position as well. And then we have our velocity. We can click here if I put in 25. Then we can see our value down below. If I hover and look up at the, at the pop-up window, you can see that that's at 25%. Now, rounding out, we have a mute function. So if I go ahead and check this box, then that note is going to be muted. Okay, so this has been a look at all the various ways that you can go about manipulating your MIDI data within Studio One. I hope this has been helpful for you guys, and I will see you in the next tutorial.